morning and welcome to worship at North Springfield Presbyterian Church, whether you're here in person or perhaps enjoying it on uh, Facebook Live, we welcome you. Uh, I do have just a couple announcements here. The deacons remind me that they are meeting next Sunday, August 1st, after church in the library during fellowship. Also today, no fellowship in the Christian Ed Building due to the uh, installation of our pastor at two o'clock today. However, the snack box is in the narthex if you'd like to have a little something to go. Are there any other announcements that I need to be announcing? All right, if not, then let us join together in our call to worship. You may rise if you choose to do so. The foolish say there is no God. We are alone on our own. We gather to declare the glory of God in our lives. The foolish say it is your life. You are accountable to no one. We gather to strengthen by the Spirit, trusting that Christ dwells in our hearts. The foolish say everything I have is mine. I owe nothing to anyone. We gather to praise the one who calls us to serve others in love. Let us worship God. We are seeking after you, loving God, for you are our refuge. Your power is at work within and among us, even when we are unaware. We want to respond, not as fools, but as faithful friends of Jesus. Use us to pray, to accomplish in, and through this congregation far more than we can ask or imagine. All glory be to you, amazing God, in this and every hour, forever and ever. We come to the font to remember that the font connects our confession of sin with the grace and cleansing of our baptism and our baptismal call every day to new life in Christ.
God looks at us to see if we are wise enough to offer confession, to receive forgiveness, and to seek to know the healing love of Christ. Let us prove our wisdom and set aside our foolish pride as we examine ourselves before God. Gracious God, we know you care about the needs of all who go to you for help, about all who suffer in body, heart, mind, or spirit. We know you care about all of us, but we confess that we often follow you because of what we want you to do for us, not that we may know and respond to what you want us to do for you. And when in your wisdom you are not given what we think we need, not healed or helped as we expect, our faith grows dim. Worthy as every true need is, we confess how often we fail to see your will first, to wait silently. When we sincerely confess our sins and desire to live a new life, we are enabled to hear the word of forgiveness Christ brings. We are freed from guilt and become new creations by God's grace. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Just as God in Christ has forgiven us, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please exchange wave signs of peace and reconciliation, even if you're home. Generous God, from whom comes every morsel we eat and every gift we are moved to share, feed us that our ears may be open to hear your word and our wills be strengthened to follow fearlessly where Christ leads to your glory and for the benefit of all humankind. Our first scripture reading today comes from the book of Ephesians in the third chapter, verses 14 through 21. Hear this reading. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God.
That was beautiful. Thank you so very much. Thank you. A reading from the Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Let us listen for what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a little boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. 
When they, had rode, when they had rode about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. We come together as your people, eternal God, to worship and praise you and to listen for your voice speaking to us across all time. Silence now any voice in us but your own. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our refuge. Amen. I was going to start this like Jeopardy, <laughs> but I decided no, <laughs> no, really not. So I'll just say, did you know, did you know, they start easy and get harder, I'll, I'll warn you. Did you know that Christopher Columbus was searching for a new route to Asia when he found the Americas instead? Did you know that Louis Pasteur was trying to find a way to keep wine from souring when he came up with the pasteurization process. Did you know that Alexander Graham Bell was looking for a way to improve the telegraph and wound up with the telephone? Well, many times when people are searching, they don't end up in the place that they thought they'd end up or find what it is they thought they'd find. Some people have said that this generation is becoming godless. But I have to tell you that I don't believe that. What I do believe is that many people, even those we least imagine, are searching for Jesus. And I believe that they would love him if they knew where and how to find him. And that's the real problem. They don't know where Christ is or how to reach out to him. But I do believe that they are searching. And people can end up in unexpected places and experience some pretty surprising results when they are searching. In our gospel reading today, the people had been with Jesus and were fed. But Jesus had many other people to feed as well. And so he and the disciples left and went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, to Capernaum. When the people realized Jesus and the others were gone, well, they got into their boats, and they crossed over to Capernaum to find them. Why? Food. They wanted more bread. Some people searched for Jesus through physical means, but more than feeding their stomachs, Jesus wanted to feed their souls. And just like grain is a, a basic food group today, bread was the basic food of Jesus' day. His was an agrarian society. Bread was earthly, accessible, essential. So when Jesus calls himself bread, he is saying, I am the basic thing that you need. I am earthly, accessible, and essential to your life. But I am not food for your stomach. I am food for your soul. The bread of life, the bread of heaven, the basic thing that will fill your soul forever. Several years ago, you may remember that the results of a worldwide study showed that people in the United States are the most overweight people in the world. And it's no wonder with so much fast food and such large helping so readily available. At the same time, some of those same people who eat all the McDonald's Double Max, that's four hamburgers, McDonald's Double Max, and they drink all those huge 7-Eleven Big Gulps, I think that's 40 ounces. At the same time that they're eating those things, they're actually starving, starving for the bread of life. In his 2009 best-selling uh, book, 
fast food nation. Investigative journalist and author Eric Schlosser tells the story of the rise of the fast food giant McDonald's. He writes, the impact of McDonald's on the nation's culture, economy, and diet is hard to overstate. The golden arches, its corporate symbol, is now more widely recognized than the Christian cross. Now that's a, a rather depressing thought. Mental images of starving children from third world countries come to mind. Sunken eyes, exposed rib cages, and bloated gullies. If the American people know Ronald McDonald better than Jesus, then this starving image can readily be applied to the spiritual state of our nation. But the good news from our gospel today is that Jesus offers himself as the food that endures for eternal life to all starving people. Remember the prodigal son? He had a hunger for independence, a hunger for the thrill and the excitement of living life in the fast lane, entirely free from the dull routine of the farm. But as you remember all too soon, the thrill and foolishness of sensuous living left him penniless, brought him to physical starvation, reduced him to the level of scrounging for any available scraps of leftover food in an actual pig pen, no less. And that brought him to himself, gave him a deeper hunger, a longing for home and family and love. These were the elements for which his soul was starving. Lasting satisfaction began to emerge, as Scripture tells us, when he was a great way off. His father saw him. And the problem is that too often we just don't get it. We understand Big Macs and Big Gulps, but metaphors can be too uh, abstract, so we miss the point. And the people Jesus addressed in our gospel reading didn't get it. He talked of the bread of life, and they wanted a concrete sign. Like when Jesus, or when Moses gave food to, to the Hebrews in the wilderness. But Jesus reminded them that it wasn't Moses that fed them. God had fed, had fed them. And Food from God nourishes more than just the stomach. It feeds the souls of people lost in their own wilderness. It goes way past a, a rumbling belly to the true emptiness in our lives. The crowd in Capernaum wanted a sign. Verse 30 of today's reading indicates that what the people really wanted was another miracle. They'd been given free bread once, and now they wanted it again, and again, and again. They asked Jesus, what miraculous sign, then, will you give that we may see it and believe you? This is the way some people today, as well as in the past, have searched for Jesus. They seem to to need big, entertaining productions, magnificent shows, and lots and lots of miracles to confirm their pilgrimage. And some churches and ministers seemingly provide that one way or another, in a smoke and mirrors sort of way. But do we really think that, that that's how God intends it to be? Miracle stories in the Bible are there to convey that God could and did act among his people. The story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 was meant to demonstrate his lordship and to invite people to faith. His word to us today is that we don't need to clamor for miracles and big entertaining shows in order to find Jesus. So then how do we do that? 
Well, he tells us himself in verse 35. He says that for us, he is the bread of life. That anyone who would come to him would never go away hungry. Throughout the ages, clear up to today, some people have searched mightily for Jesus through physical means and others through elaborate miracles. But Jesus said we would find him through faith. And it's that simple and that hard. Faith. He, meaning everyone, who comes to me is a somewhat general invitation. But the matter becomes specific when Jesus adds, in effect, everyone who comes believing. In other words, everyone who comes having faith. And there's the rub, the stipulation wherein Jesus indicates the manner of being which nourishes and feeds true life, which is having faith. Now, there are actually two kinds of bread, material bread, which helps us from the outside in, and spiritual bread, which helps us from the inside out. Jesus' concern for us was from the inside out because the inward life was to him the true life. As French philosopher and theologian Blaise Pascal is quoted as writing, there is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of every man which cannot be filled by any created thing, but only by God, the creator, made known through Jesus. Jesus said, he who believes in me shall never thirst, shall never be unsatisfied, shall never lack that essential ingredient, that most basic thing needed to provide the fullness of life. But few of us really take that seriously. Now, if our physical condition isn't up to par, we get concerned. And we go to the doctor, which is a very good thing. But if we are frustrated, anxiety-ridden, despairing, filled with a sense of failure, hopelessness, loss of meaning. We often do nothing. We long for peace of mind and fulfillment in a well-rounded life. We aspire to, but we fall short of spiritual awareness. So then what do we need to do? Well, scripture indicates that we need to go on a diet, a holy diet. We need to tend to being fed from the inside out, to being fed spiritual food. We need to get to know God by reading and rereading our Bibles. We need to live with God by talking and, and talking to God, and not just in our prayers, talking to God and praying. We need to love God by giving God the edge over the affection that we have on the material things that we crave and that we want. And we need to let God's presence permeate our whole lifestyle every day, every minute of every day. Now that's a tall order for sure. And the hymn writer Horatius Bonar inspires us in our endeavor with these words. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give The living water, thirsty one, Stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in him. So what do we value most in life? And that's a, a very difficult question for most of us to answer. But we need to be realistic about it. If our desires and dreams and hungers are for this world only, then okay. But that's all you get. 
However, if we're hungry for a relationship with God, then through faith, Christ in Christ, we get it. Only Christ can satisfy the longings that Christians have for e the eternal life of God's kingdom. No matter who we are, no matter our circumstances, we are all invited to go on a holy diet and be fed by Jesus' spiritual food. And that, brothers and sisters, is the long and short of the good news of our gospel story. Thanks be to God. Amen. Before we do the affirmation of faith, I just want to speak to you uh, a, a moment about the affirmation. I know you know it's different all the time, and, and I do that on purpose. I change it uh, from week to week, and sometimes I use one of the other of the Apostles' creeds. Um, sometimes I use excerpts from the other creeds, like uh, the, the uh, Brief Statement of Faith, the Confession of 1967. I also use Scripture, and I do that intentionally so that uh, when we do the affirmation of faith, we can do it fresh and meaningfully. And so today, we are going to sing our affirmation of faith. And it is uh, hymn 481, I Believe in God the Father. Let us stand and affirm our faith. Gathered by the Holy Spirit and fed by the Word, we come together as the people of God to pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our provider, make our church a sign of your bountiful compassion and abundant grace. Encourage this congregation to faithfully and intentionally support the ongoing life and ministry of this church by sharing generously of all that you have first given us. 
and awaken hunger for your truth in the church around the world so all are fed with your love and mercy. Bless the fields that supply our bread with healthy soil and sufficient rain and care for those who tend the crops. Strengthen this congregation in our service to our community food ministries. Prosper the work of those who supply and oversee other feeding programs in our community, in our country, and around the world. Guide prosperous nations to seek a just allocation of the earth's resources, that all people will be fed. And guide all nations to understand the true meaning of stewardship of your creation. Raise up leaders who, who love truth and seek justice and peace. Enable understanding among people. Bring an end to religious violence brought on by fanatics of all religions. And soften hearts hardened by prejudice and hate. Comfort those who fear that they will not be able to feed their children. Send them healthy food and surround them with people who care. With your spirit, strengthen those who are lonely, depressed, addicted, or grieving. And all those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, fill them with your love and goodness that they may be rooted and grounded in your love. Especially today, we pray for Brenda, Paula, Carol, for all those on the prayer list of North Springfield Church, and for all those we now name in our hearts, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Unite us with all the saints who reveal to us the breadth and length and height and depth of your love, which surpasses all understanding. Loving God, you are near to us when we cry out to you. Into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because a little boy shared his bread and fish, a multitude ate. Let us share what has been given to us.
We rejoice with thanksgiving. Everyone. We rejoice with thanksgiving for all we have received. Multiply these gifts that we give so that the world may more deeply know fullness of life in you. Amen. sharing the bread of life with everyone you meet, allowing the spirit of life to strengthen your whole being and being open to the transforming of your soul by the fullness of God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day your whole life long. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.